to, to train connective tissue effectively, uh, you got to have a lot of degrees of freedom. Hi, my name is Bill Parisi. I'm the founder of the Parisi Speed School. We started back in 1992. We've been in business. I've been a coach for now 30 plus years. We've trained over a million athletes. Uh, we put hundreds of guys in the NFL, Major League Baseball, NBA, all different types of pro athletes. But our focus has been the youth and high school athlete. There's two elements to think about. There's the degrees of freedom and the intensity, right? Degrees of freedom and intensity. And they're inversely related. So let's talk about degrees of freedom because to, to train connective tissue effectively, uh, you got to have a lot of degrees of freedom. But let's, let's take an example like the squat or the deadlift or the bench press or, you know, the lunge, right? The degrees of freedom in the squat is really, you should have limited degrees of freedom to be safe, right? Your, your, your degrees of freedom is in one plane of motion, sagittal plane. Uh, your degrees of freedom is only going to be in the ankle, knee, and hip joint. If you have more degrees of freedom in any other joint, you're in trouble. So limited degrees of freedom, very high load, very high intensity. Okay, that's traditional training. And, and most of the traditional training takes place in the sagittal plane. So fascia training or omnidirectional some maximal low plating uh, uh, some maximal load training is inversely related because we have lots of degrees of freedom lower weight so i'll take a tool a medicine ball or a viper and i'll hold it out you know out away from my center of mass and by creating this load outside of my body's uh, uh center of mass line i have all stress going through my back and i have a load maybe 20 pounds i'm holding out in this stabilized position it's creating stability throughout my body. Now, it's not a lot of weight, 20, 25 pounds, but if I hold that out, and I hold that out there for, you know, 10, 15 seconds at a time, you know, it's gonna change the, the dynamics and the impulse. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to trigger the fibroblast cells. Isometric training plays a really important role in, in tendon health and tendon and connective tissue. And we believe, based on that research, the same concept happens with fascia. So when we talk about fascia, it's everywhere in the body. It's like the oceans around the world, right? But fascia also gets developed based on our sport and our activity and our training. So throwers, really world-class throwers, pitchers, they absolutely have this, this free energy, this, this development of connective tissue that helps provide elastic recoil. And research shows that there's 30 up to 50% of recoil is provided by free energy of the connective tissue. The way I train connective tissue and fascia, I incorporate it into my warm up. You know, we do a lot of different things. And, and a lot of people, in some degrees, are training it, but they don't know, right? If you're doing, you know, different bouncing exercises, like we, we always warm up with rudimentary jumps, right? We do a lot of bouncing activities at the Parisi Speed School because a lot of challenges, muscles are layering on top of one another, and we, we need the muscles. Uh, you know, to glide over one another and, and, and it should act like, you know, syrup, you know, that, that fascia. And sometimes when we get living in the sagittal plane and we, we, we don't train omnidirectional, that fascia and that, that because fascia is 90% water and collagen, becomes more like peanut butter. It gets sticky. That's where 80% of soft tissue injuries are in the white collagenous tissue. We got to keep it fluid. We got to keep it flowing. From there, go into dynamic movements where we're doing omnidirectional submaximal loading with medicine balls, a viper, uh, a kettlebell. We're holding weights in odd positions and it stimulates the system and really tri those, triggers those fascia uh, fibroblast cells. The biggest benefit of fascia training, one, like I said, is injury resiliency, creating more integrity throughout the system. Think about a lot of injuries, the research shows a lot of injuries occur, hamstring pulls, hip flexor, what have you, a lot of pulls. The collagenous tissue is what's getting injured, the white collagenous tissue, not the muscle. So the muscle's strong, but it's too strong for the stuff that's holding it together. The other thing too about fascia training, the benefit is when you have a strong uh, you know, fascia system, you're able to have greater recoil. You're more dynamic, you can get more free energy. You know, at every, every jump, every sprint, every stride. So you're gonna have more endurance, you're gonna be more powerful and it's creating a free energy system. We really hope you enjoyed that video. If you'd like to see some more from Vertimax, subscribe to this YouTube channel as we're constantly adding new videos. Here are a couple that you might like. Don't forget to download the Vertimax app on your phone or your desktop. There you can find some complete training programs and additional training videos. Good luck with your training.